Okay, so I want to talk about two other uh, common bowel problems, and then we're going to go back and look at a few images from some of the things we've talked about. Um, flatulence um, is excessive gas, and it's always a joke, but it can be really problematic for some patients. Uh, it can cause pain and lots of embarrassment. So what are the causes? Constipation is one of the most common causes because the foods that are um, sitting there longer or the stool that's sitting there longer may continue to ferment and produce that gas. Intestinal gas may be swallowed, but most of it is, is formed by the fermentation of foods that we've eaten. So um, constipation is a common cause. Immobility, because that slows the gut down and gives more time for that fermentation. But increased fiber intake is, is also um, a common reason because the fiber sits in, it pulls fluid in to the uh, stool. So it all makes the stool softer, but it also is sitting in the gut fermenting. And so if we increase fiber intake really rapidly, that patient has to develop some tolerance to it. So increased fiber can cause uh, someone to feel very gassy and increased intake of some sugars, um, especially the sugar alcohols that are used as uh, sugar substitutes because they're not, um, we're not able to break those down. They don't add calories to a food, but because we're not able to break those down, they sit in the gut, they ferment and they cause gas and diarrhea for a lot of patients. Management, when we're having someone increase their fiber intake, we want to do that gradually. We want to in encourage ambulation. If the patient is struggling with, um, with um, gas, we want to avoid gas producing sugars. Um, we want to manage constipation. And then there's the main medic medication that's given is semethicone. It promotes the collection of gas bubbles into larger pockets so that it's easier to expel them. Also, for patients who are having a lot of gas pain, especially postoperatively, um, we can uh, use a rectal tube to help relieve some of that gas or a Harris flush. A Harris flush is a spe specific type of enema. The enema tube is inserted. The end of the tube goes into a bucket of fluid, hopefully some isotonic fluid. And then that fluid, um, the bucket is lowered and then it's raised to allow some fluid to go in, and then it's lowered to allow the fluid to come back out through the tube, and that hopefully brings some of the gas with it. Okay, so the last problem we wanna talk about is hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids are distended blood vessels in the rectum and the anus. Um, they can be caused by constipation and straining, by increased intra-abdominal pressure, so someone who has obesity, uh, someone who is pregnant, um, that can be caused by liver disease and by heart failure because of that vascular congestion because of poor blood return. Um, management, we wanna manage the causes to try to prevent them. Um, the patient can use moist wipes for cleaning after defecation instead of uh, toilet paper. Witch hazel pads are astringent, so they shrink the, temp the hemorrhoids temporarily and provide some comfort. Hydrocortisone ointments decrease the swelling and provide some comfort. Sits baths and ice packs can also provide some comfort. And we would encourage a cold sits bath or a cool one, not a, um, not a warm one, because that's going to increase blood flow and make it worse. Uh, sometimes people want to use donut cushions, but that actually increases the pressure in the rectum. So it makes hemorrhoids worse. So we want to recommend no donut cushions. Okay. In the next section, we're gonna talk about bowel diversions, but I wanna show you a few images. When we were talking about the small intestine, we were talking about the villi. So I'm gonna show a picture. So this would be the lumen of the small intestine and all of these little finger-like projections are villi. And on each villus, there are even more. So you can see how this increases the surface area for the liquid, uh, the chyme to, to move through for absorption of nutrients. So let's look at the next picture. Okay, we talked about external fecal collection devices. These look very similar sometimes. There are different uh, manufacturers, but these can look very similar to a, um, an ostomy device. Um, or appliance, 
uh, they're applied around the rectum similarly to the way they're applied around an ostomy. Okay, so this is an external collection device. And I'm going to show you also an internal fecal collection device. I have to keep switching back and forth so it'll show up. Okay, here is an internal fecal collection device. Um, this is a fairly large tube because it has to be able to collect liquid stool. It's placed into the rectum past the sphincter. This bulb is inflated in order to keep it in place. Okay. Okay, so in the next section, we're going to talk about different types of bowel diversions.